Welcome to the Style and Vibes podcast with me, Michaela. I'll be giving you the inside scoop on music, fashion, culture, and more from Caribbean celebrities and tastemakers across the globe, pushing our culture with authenticity and, of course, style and vibes. All right, Maurice of Island People's Travel and, uh, wait, wait, Island People Carnival and Travel. So you got to give us the whole scoop. What, what do you do? Where are you based? Give us all the intro, all the information about you. All right, cool. So uh, I worked in media for about 15 years now. So I, I used to work at an original TV station called CMC. I am not sure if you're familiar with it, mm-hmm. but we would do stuff across the Caribbean. And after a few years, I went out on my own. And in 2016, I decided to uh, revise what I was doing, revamp, um, and refine and I decided to focus on building some businesses. Mm-hmm. So that I expanded into travel and culture and also a tech company that does virtual reality. So, right, that's the line I went down and I started to travel more in 2016. So I started to capture the various cultures from the different islands and then I would use that knowledge to build experiences. So like charitable experiences or normal cultural experiences, that's what he did. Now you're based in the islands? Where are you based? Barbados. Bar- Barbados! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So you're based in Barbados and you run a travel organization apart from a, and a virtual reality um, yeah. tech company as well. Yeah. Um, so I know that you are very familiar with um carnival and its growth over i would say mm-hmm. there's been a, a bit of an explosion over the last i would say five to ten years yeah. um it's nothing new to caribbean you know folks and caribbean diaspora um of yeah. all kinds and we'll get to that as well um but there's definitely been an influx um from an industry standpoint and a travel standpoint not just to the big carnivals like trinidad and um rio and um even like over in europe they have what's the one in germany i forget um and and you know st louis has their own the mardi gras and stuff like that um but definitely the caribbean uh barbados crop over they have all kind of almost become a gateway to to the caribbean from a travel perspective and and a a tourist perspective because i remember you know a lot especially um, going to to university here, a lot of um, Caribbean diaspora who were going to school, they would go back for the carnival experiences um, yeah. uh, back home in essence. And so that was, and then here we have the West Indian Day Parade in Brooklyn mm-hmm. and we have various carnivals, but they're not as big. It's not as big of an experience. Um, so being in the travel business and in the travel space over the last I would say five to 10 years. What are some of the trends that you have seen um, coming in from, uh, r- with regards to, to um, Carnival? Uh, I, trends. Um, what I like is that uh, it is growing in the Caribbean and the Caribbean people are having more of, a, more of an appreciation for the Carnival. They saw Jamaica has come on board into focusing on doing more Carnival as well as Guyana has stepped in. Mm-hmm. So I, I really like that because each country would have their own style that they add to the carnival, carnival culture. So yeah, that's what we can see uh, in terms of regionally. But I, I've seen carnivals in various islands grow because more people are becoming aware of this. Not just really that. Um, so from outside people, more people want to experience carnivals and the various carnivals, not just really that as well. And a lot and I, of the other islands they have great cultural, like uh, their cultural landscape is very, very great, very, very nice. Each carnival you go to, you get a different experience, but it's all mixed with Caribbean life, so it's all good. So from my perspective, especially being here in the States, I feel like a lot of that has to do with the ima- amazing imagery and visuals that come yeah. out of those experience and they get better and better every year. They're documented so even better. And because we have the digital, 
digitization of you know sharing everything with regards to culture i think social media has played a huge part in the interest of more people wanting to go to carnivals would you say that that's true or it's kind of a mix for sure, for sure. um social media is easy an easy way to market everything that's going on so it is a growing culture um and social media definitely plays a part so when we talk about social media specifically in the influencer space um what are you seeing especially in the last i would say two to three years mm. that has happened and we'll get to the topic at hand but just okay. from an influencer standpoint what is really happening so for us it looks very different so i want your perspective being based in the caribbean what what do you see happening um in the influencer space of of Caribbean carnivals? I see regionally the influencers in the Caribbean having more courage and confidence in the products that they want to push. They, they believe it could be international and that's the role they're going down. They're producing some marvelous things. The dancers are on point. Like everything is heading towards an international standard. Um, you said the subject, and I know what we we're going to talk about. So I would, I would overstep and touch on that as yet, but um, originally I, I think everyone is confident in the product they're producing. Now, in terms of actual influence, and, and I, I kind of like to go back to this a lot. I mean, the ability to influence one is to share and entice people to spend their dollars with a particular experience whatever that really is and i think that influencers have always existed in the carnival space they yeah. just didn't have a title yeah for sure they were um, like the gatekeepers to the hottest parties the bands the you know access to specific shows the behind the scenes type of thing like i think that that has existed but i, I just want to get your perspective on if that's true or not uh, yeah for sure for sure but i mean it's just normal life that that person may just be a popular person um friends inviting friends and that sort of stuff is not really as you said it didn't really have a title as influencer that which is fairly new with the with Instagram and Facebook and that sort of stuff. But I mean, it was always that way. Mm -hmm. so, don't know how sparking the word was spreading, you would go. That's, that's just the way it is, but it's normal like that. I don't know. When, once the term and the name influencer kind of blew up here, it, yeah. it kind of took on a life of its own. So in terms of, I know you've heard all of the commentary around white chocolate, AKA yeah. Josh Butler, um, and the comments that he has made as an outsider coming in, what, what were your initial thoughts and, 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 and feelings towards the comments that he made about paving the way for influencers um, in the carnival space? I was furious. Furious to the point that uh, I, I, I colorfully replied on his, I will say what you say, but he was going to be a madman. I mean, we're down here living and doing this thing. This is normal to us. This is, he has no idea what is connected with. And we open the space because we're welcoming people. We open the space and let him come in and experience the culture. And then he wants to get on. Like he, pretty much Christopher Columbus did, as you would see. <laughs> <from here. laughs> Yes, Christopher Columbus, Columbus yes. Like he, he discovered it or something when it was already existing for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else to say, but I was curious to the point that, like me and Melissa, we were talking back and forth about this thing for days and like plan of action sort of thing behind the scenes um, because something like this cannot happen again. But I saw a lot of people saying the same things we were saying, we were discussing it. Like Bob, did she come out and she put everything we were talking about into that video that she did? It cannot happen again. We cannot have um, a white person stepping into the Caribbean, which is predominantly black, and claiming culture and then going overseas and marketing culture. But it's our fault as well. 
because like the story I would have shared with you earlier, um, it's not a, a it's not a regional problem, it's a diaspora problem problem. We have I guess history would have played a part on on how we react when white people step into our spaces and how we are so appreciative of anything we think that they accept or praise or they have appreciation for. It, if it's just appreci appreciation, we don't mind, but I think this is one of the first times that the Caribbean has actually seen a real uh, situation of a culture, culture vulture. Like we have appreciation where people come and take part in, but we, a cultural vulture situation where um, somebody takes something and wants to claim it. That is, I cannot ever remember anything like that happening. Yeah, but I mean, I think, you know, the welcoming space, and sometimes you almost don't see it coming, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it, we have to understand how that, how that happens. And even previously, just a few weeks ago, there was a whole lot of, I would say 50-50 conversation around Adele's yeah. Um, Notting Hill carnival costume and hairstyle. So mm. I think where, you know, we live in a space where, and, and even I would say people that lived, a lot of people, it was like 50 50. Like a lot of people were mm. like, no, that, what is she doing? Like, why would she do all mm. of that? Mm -hmm. it, but it, it, but then again, it is carnival. That is the costume. But I think what a lot of people had a problem with was the hair you know that that part of the hair because it's just like you wouldn't normally wear that hairstyle but it's also probably the only space where she would get away with such a hairstyle right. so i think the responsibility to understand the time the space and the place if we if 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 people come in and continue to go unchecked so maybe it wasn't her intention but I feel like if she, if, if I, it wasn't such a big deal, the next time she experiences carnival or the next time she happens to be in a culture that isn't necessarily one that she was raised, born, grow, it, like being growing up next to and growing up in is two totally different things. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy. It's a, it's an easy, slippery slope. And as Caribbean people, we have to understand that anytime it goes unchecked, sometimes, and sometimes it's not like, you know, it's an observation. And I think sometimes we, we go so quick to be like, you know, just to dismiss it instead yeah, of yeah. really have the conversation around, well, there's something there and it, it, it leads, it's a gateway to something else. You know what I mean? Like, if you look at like DJ Khaled and how he has blessed everything and, you know, using a lot of terminology, yes, he is a friend of the culture, but, and he visits and he's always, you know, talking really greatly about Jamaica and its contributions and mm -hmm. the music and the, the style and all of that stuff. But there's definitely a slippery slope. So, it, and, and it's not without reason because then you see th and hear things like this, the idea that, you know, Josh really thought that he had, and what was, what was intriguing to me is the visual signs that the other panelists were giving him and he still made the comment because they were almost signaling to him, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. And he literally went there because he had, he was already on this train of thought and not only that, he was just like, nah, my Caribbean people are going to back me up all the way. And I think he had some validation to his comment. He said it the wrong way, but also it makes us think like, hmm, if he is the, in his mind, views himself as an influencer in the whining space of carnival there's a problem not just with his thought process but what we've allowed him to think in yeah. that process yeah. as well you see um when when the whole adele situation happened it wasn't as it wasn't as um devastating to us as it was to a lot of americans in the black diaspora um like we, we saw that as appreciation. Like, what happened with, with Josh? What happened with White Chalk? Like, no, that will put us on... We're going to be a bit more on the lookout 
for situations that could arise like that. Like what happened with Adele, um, Black Americans and Americans living in America, sorry, and Black people living in America that are not African American, they live in a different environment to us in the Caribbean. Like down here, we are predominantly Black. We we have a bit more comfort um, out in the open, out in our environments and that sort of stuff. Over there, I understand that the environment is different. So when you're accustomed to seeing your your um, your rate get trampled on and that sort of stuff, you're going to be a bit more sensitive to things like that, like your your stuff being stolen, culture vultures, and all of that type of stuff. So it wasn't as as the situation was as dire to us as it was to Black American Adele. But you see the Josh thing, you see the white chocolate thing. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, there's each does, each situation you have to take it. You have to take it. Know, you know. <laughs> you know. He does yeah. not even know. And then it turned out that he also stole a St. Lucian designer's design and she gave up. He, oh. Is that the merchandise he was selling? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He stole the design um, from a St. Lucian designer. And he went on and he said, when she, when she spoke about it, she told me she got some backlash and that sort of stuff. And she, she, she gave up. She, it, it had a, I'm not going to get into details, but it had a real big impact on her life. And she's still dealing with some of the consequences to this day. And I'm sure that what happened and it being brought to light, it, it, it would have triggered something, yes. Yeah? He, he said, said it was a bit triggering, but it would, I'm sure it also gave her some sort, some form of comfort to know that um, it finally came out and people were, were upset about the situation. There were St. Lucians that told her that she should be happy about the fact that he's wearing her design. So, uh, which leads back to the problem that we have in the diaspora where we are appreciative, appreciative of people. I have any sort of appreciation for anything we do in the culture just because they have to. It's, mm. it's a big problem. And I just hope we learned and continue to learn from everything that happened over the last week or two weeks. Um, so in terms of us being so open with our culture, and I don't think that we're going to close it off or anything like that. And, and we have to be mindful, but... Yeah. You said something earlier about, you know, Carnival being international and wanting, you know, you want more people to come. You want more people to enjoy. Mm -hmm. But it's also, this is the backlash or this is kind of some of what we have to expose ourselves to as culture expands. So how do we deal with you know, those types of challenges because you can't say to the world and then not have outsiders come in and see the opportunities that we are not taking advantage of. How do we, how do we ensure that that doesn't happen? That's the thing. It's not that we weren't taking advantage of the opportunities. The other part of the problem is that, um, I mean, they're, they're influencers that already exist that have been doing stuff for years, but the problem exists where the the bands, the companies, their their bands in Trinidad that tell photographers only take photos of red girls, of like skin girls, mm-hmm. which is that, that's a big problem. Um, not just bands, but their people that work in tourism. Not me. I, I I see the the opportunity as well. I see the the value of having influencers that may be from overseas, but you cannot overlook your people that are here that are already influencers that um contribute so much and leave out your people here and only support people from outside. Obviously, the people from outside they will have a uh well, me the yeah, me have a wider um, demographic because of where they're, they're based overseas and it would help spread the word of carnival and stuff. I understand it from that perspective, but which is fine, but once you don't leave out your, your own people, 
Yeah, that's really the problem with it because we have some, some fantastic products that could go in international down here from dancing and ev- everything. Mm-hmm. Using everything, we got to make sure that the support is here as well. Do you believe that carnival is a gateway to other experiences on the different islands? And and do you hear people first coming for carnival, but then coming back throughout other times of the year to experience the the culture outside of carnival? That's the way building packages do. They do. I build packages that um, are well balanced between like folk experiences plus. Actually, they're heavily island-based experience, experiences, island culture experiences, because they want to make sure that anyone that uh, decides to book one of the packages, they, they experience what the vibe of the whole island is, and not just the carnival. Mm-hmm. Because each island has its own unique um, presence in the space, so they want to make sure they get the essence of the whole island. And like native experiences, not really the Course, like very polished experiences. I want to make sure they get the real vibe of the island. Mm. So, in terms of, and you kind of touched on just the idea of tourism and the tourist boards, the experience at the tourist boards, um, they're not always aligned with, you know, the local experiences of each of the countries. Um, respectively, I get. I, I think until COVID, you know, where people had to kind of explore their backyards, you know, travel has primarily focused on the international experiences and keeping it, you know, in a bubble. Whereas I think now, because of COVID, travel um, in your in your own countries has become. Um, because we can't really travel that much internationally um, in order to keep tourism going, the local tourist market has been uh, ignoring locals for a, a while because you know it hasn't they, they just haven't feel the need to um, reach that audience. but I think now it's becoming more and more important. Are you experiencing any shifts and transitions uh, with an organization like yourself? Um, and the, the tourist boards and how they position themselves. Yes, um, I actually had a meeting this week and I have another one next week. Um, I, I don't want to get into detail, but well, I guess we could talk about it. I do, as I said, I do virtual reality, so I guess you could figure from there because what I would have been doing is traveling from island to island, I would have been capturing carnivals and photo, video, and work reality. So, like, they have a whole heap of island culture from multiple mm-hmm. islands. So, right. And I, I don't know if Melissa mentioned to you, but I have a platform based on that mm-hmm. uh, that would allow you to travel without having to leave from wherever mm-hmm. you are in the world. Mm-hmm. So you get all of your headset and experience carnival, um, island culture, all of that sort of stuff. So, I'm just in some talks with some interested party i can see that going very far very soon (laughs) everybody's missing their carnival experiences but i i think you know everyone is bracing for 2021 they're not really sure what's going to happen or people are just gonna risk it they're just like i'm tired I'm, i'm i'm going to do exactly what i want to do but you know they want safe options to do so um, how do you see influencers evolving or this situation changing the ideals of what an influencer of the culture and brand ambassador of the culture look like? Mm, I, even micro-influencers play an important part because micro-influencers, a lot of the time, they have... Um, they have followers that are really invested in their brand. So big or small, those those influencers are important because they could pull people to come and experience Carnival for them, um, come and experience Island Life for them. So that's the impact, I think. Um, Do you work with both influencers locally and internationally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. That's all been, right. I've been over the last couple of years, I've, I've been building a relationship. Yeah. As well, through all that thing. So. Yeah, I like it. Well, thank you so much, Maurice. What What do you have coming up? Let share share with the people then. Well, just what I mentioned to you, um, mm. I am focusing on that part because that has the most potential right now. Um, but I'll get back to, once I pass this, I'll, I'll get back to looking to do more cultural experiences. But until then, it's just preparation until everyone can travel again to make sure you have everything together in packages and for the experiences to make sure the, the experiences will be fantastic. Um, that's all, that's all really. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I truly appreciate your expertise and you're always welcome back. So please keep in touch. Uh, and, uh, you know, well, I'll see you on the interwebs, on the social. Okay. <laughs>